Hi, my name is Eric Worrell and I work at rentprep.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to deal with annoying tenant applicants who don't read your entire listing uh, when you're posting for your vacant rentals. So let's say you don't accept pets and you don't accept smokers and you put that information in your rental listing but you still get people asking you those questions. So what I want to do is show you how you can automate responses to that and I'm going to show you it by doing this as an example right now. So you can see this is property123 at tortoiserentals.com as a custom email that I've created. I'm going to say I'm interested interested in your property, but do you accept pets? So let's see what happens when I click send. Within a minute, I got this email that says, do you accept pets? And you can say, here it says, here's a little more information before proceeding forward. My criteria are no pets, no smoking. I run a background check on every qualified applicant. Now you can put whatever information you want in this automatic reply. And this is all being done through Gmail. But the most important thing that's really neat is that you can see a link here to schedule a call on Calendly. So what that is, is the person, if they are interested, and as you can see, it said, now, if you'd like to discuss further, please set up a time we can call or that we can set up to uh, discuss. Now, when you click that link, it opens up and you can see, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. So I set up this link so that people only pick times that work for me. Now you get to choose what you want to do in Calendly. So let's say Thursday, you can see that 7, 7, 15, 7, 30, 7, 45, all the way to 8, 45. So what I did is if in my particular case, I only want to field phone calls and have phone calls with applicants from seven to nine, they can pick a time that works for them. So this is a pretty neat service. And I'll show you what happens if somebody says, I want to you know, talk to you at 730 about this rental um, on uh, December 14th. So I'm going to click confirm. It's going to re require them to put details. So you have to put all these in here. So I'm going to put in a phone number, 716-999-9999. You can see my email address for work here, and I'm going to schedule an event. So what has happened so far? Uh, you got a phone call verification here that's going to come through. Now, if I go in here, I've got an automatic um, invitation that has been sent. And now I can add this to my Google Calendar, and it's got all the information in here. And we have now, without ever talking to a tenant applicant, um, given your criteria again to them. We've also given them a link where they can automatically schedule a time to chat with you that works based on your schedule. So how did all of this happen? How does this work? Well, I'm going to deconstruct this backwards and show you how this is all done. So one of the first things I did, and I did this in a previous video, I showed you how you can create aliases using um, Google Admin. This is the G Suite tool. So my main account is Tori at Tortoise Rentals, but if you look at this, you can create these aliases. You can have up to 20. So you can create a Gmail alias for each of your properties if you have you know, 15, 18 properties or less. So when I created a um, listing here uh, for a rental on Craigslist, let's see if I can get the right one here. Um, this is a test listing. This is created through this alias, property123 at tortoiserentals.com. So what you can do is when you create a listing for a rental property, make it specific to an email that is specific to that property. Now it's not gonna cost you any more money, it's just five bucks a month for G Suite account and then you can have 20 aliases. So now what happens is if somebody replies to this, they're replying to property123 at tortoiserentals.com. So let's go into this tortoiserentals.com. How do you end up doing that automated response that I did? Well, that's something called a uh, canned response. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna click settings up here or excuse me, the gear icon and go to settings. And I want you to go to something called labs right here. Now, when you're inside of labs, I want you to search for canned. It's going to show up enabled on mine. It will be disabled for you. I want you to click enable and then click save changes. All right. So when that's saved, what you can do is you can go back into your inbox and then what you can start doing is creating a message. All right. So you can have the message. Um, we'll leave the two uh, part blank subject. Uh, thank you for your interest. You know what? I'm just going to do example one, two, three, because you've already seen the other um, email that got sent out. Example one, two, three, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So in the lower right hand corner, more options down here. I'm going to click canned responses and I'm going to click new canned response. And it's going to be example one, two, three. So what I have now is I have a canned response that looks exactly like this. So what you can do, which is pretty cool, is you can click this little uh, drop-down menu, 
And what I would do in this particular case is you've created an alias specific to your rental property. So the only time it's going to be used is when people are reaching out to all of your listings online. So let's say that they send property one, two, three at TaurusRentals.com. What you can do is create a filter with this search. Now I've already done this. You can apply a label to it, which is real easy. You can create new labels. This makes it a little bit easier to find emails. Um, so I'm going to do property one, two, three, and then most importantly, send canned response. So you can see that example one, two, three that I set up or the thank you and your interest for my property is a different canned response. So example one, two, three, create filter. So now if somebody emails that account, instead of getting this email, they'd get that blah, 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 blah one I just created. Now, what you might be wondering still is, all right, well, let's, you know what, just for example's sake, let's see if this works again. I'm going to click send here. Okay, so you can see right there, canned response automatically sent back. These are two different canned responses I set up, and those are all good and ready to go. Now, you might be wondering, how did this Calendly thing work right here? What I suggest is going to Calendly.com, and you can create your account, and I will show you what it looks like and what you want to do when you set up your account here. So Calendly is really nice because it just essentially says, here is when you can actually set up an appointment to talk to me, rather than here's my phone number, call me whenever, and then have to deal with the frustration of all these different uh, times and things that you're trying to get to for phone calls. So when you get into your account, what you're going to do is you go to event types and you want to do a new event type. And this is for a one-on-one. -on -one. And the event name is um, discussing property one, two, three. Okay. Location will display after. I'm going to write phone call. Okay. And then description instructions. You can put whatever you want here. Um, let's say you're going to call them. Then it'll say, I'll call you at the specified time you select. Okay, cool. So we have an event link, which is a custom link. You can color it whatever you want. I'll do this one. Uh, why don't we go uh, this pastel green? Okay, next. Now, you probably don't need more than a 15-minute phone call for this. Uh, you can do custom if you want, if you want to do 10-minute calls. All right. This is Eastern time. Make sure you got that. Set up your available hours when people can call you. So this is really important. This is when you are going to allow people to call you. So you can copy it from um, – I'm just going to do this, though, uh, create new available hours so you can see. So you can see it's 9 to 5, Monday to Friday. Why don't we click on today and let's say you're somebody who's available on your lunch hour uh, and that's it. That's the only time you want to be fielding and having these calls. So I'm going to say um, 1 p.m., 12 to 1, and then I'm going to apply it to multiple. So I'm going to say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Let's say for whatever reason I'm not available on Fridays, though, because I want to have that time to myself. This is going to repeat. So what you can see here is now 12 to 1 all those days, and that's all set. So I'm going to click Next. I just want to make sure I got everything so far. So this is important. Up to this point, you have now that lunch hour is scheduled on this. Uh, but invitee questions, you're going to want to make sure that you add another question and just put um, phone number I can reach you at. Okay, and we'll have this answer, one line, and then make sure you require this because you're going to need that number. So what you're going to get is you're going to get this information all sent to you, and it's all going to hook in with whatever uh, uh, calendar service you use as well. So this is exactly what I'd recommend doing. Um, and then what you'll do is your event type is on. I believe we're all set. So now if I click on event types, and I've got a few of them in here, uh, you can see discussing property one, two, three. I'm going to click on that. And what you have here, let me um, view live page. That's what we're going to want to click on. This, do, 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 right here is the link you're going to want to grab. All right. So if I open up a new incognito link, this is exactly what somebody would see when they click that link. So what you can do is you can add this to that email that we discussed earlier. So when you're making your canned message, yeah hate when that happens. When you're making your canned messages in here, you want to add your custom link here. And what it's going to do is it's going to 
uh, cut out the people who are annoying because they're asking you questions about your criteria that you already stated in your rental listings. And then what the second thing it's going to do is it's going to restate all of your criteria, any information you want to give them. And then it's the third thing it's going to do is it's going to give them a link that they can use to schedule a time to chat with you. So now you don't have to try to do a back and forth or calling people and they're not answering. And the really neat thing is up to this point is because I have my email just through a work email, right? It's Tori, Tori at Tortoise Rentals that ends up answering the canned response. And then I have the aliases is I can set all of this up so that it is um, listed in a way that if I take the time to do things up front, that this automatically will kind of filter out a lot of the annoying questions that you get with your rentals. So hopefully this is something that makes sense to you. I know it's a little complicated and a little techy, but if you walk through the steps of this, you can see exactly how you can create a canned response to rental listing requests. And also in that canned response, have a link to where people can schedule a time to talk to you, where you can then go into your pre-screening questions. This is again, another opportunity to weed out bad applicants, but if you do this in this way, it'll make it a little bit easier for you to kind of deal with the high volume if you're having that issue. And if you're also working a nine to five, you can make it a little bit easier so your phone's not ringing off the hook. All right. Hopefully, again, this made sense. And if you have any questions, you can always comment below, subscribe to our channel. We'll be doing more videos like this showing you how to uh, make the rental and the tenant screening process easier for you as a landlord. All right. Take care.